Just because the United States declared war on England did not mean that they were actually ready for war. The military was small, and there was no way that the countries that had helped in the revolution, France and Spain, would be able to help this time with Napoleon being taken on in Europe. The early land battles did not go well. Just as in the revolution, the United States tried to invade Canada. And, just as in the revolution, the invasion failed. This time the United States believed that the Canadians were ready to eliminate British rule from their country, but they could not have been more wrong. The only success that the United States had was at sea, with ships like the United States Constitution, WASP, and the United States winning key victories, but not enough to turn the tide of the war in favor of the United States. After two years, the British blockade pretty much eliminated any trade and naval attacks to zero. The British then made the decision to capture Washington, D.C. As they got closer, President Madison and his wife Dolly evacuated the capital city, with Dolly making sure to take this famous picture of George Washington with them. After burning Washington to the ground, the British marched about 50 miles north to the city of Baltimore, defended by Fort McHenry. On September 13, 1814, the British launched an all-night bombardment of the fort that protected the entrance to the city. When the smoke cleared the next morning, the U.S. flag was still flying over the fort, announcing that the United States would not surrender. A young lawyer was under guard on board a British ship, trying to negotiate the release of an American prisoner, when he was inspired to write a poem to express the joy he felt over seeing that flag still flying over the fort. The words that Francis Scott Key wrote that night became the Star Spangled Banner and became the national anthem of the United States in 1931. While the war was being fought, delegates from the New England states were meeting in Hartford at what became known as the Hartford Convention to discuss seceding from the country. The war and the British blockade were costing them an enormous amount of money in trade, and they decided that what they called Mr. Madison's War was something they did not want to be a part of. Unfortunately for them, an announcement about the end of the war put an end to their plans. With their defeat in Baltimore and an end to the first round of fighting with Napoleon in Europe over in the spring before, the British realized how tired they were of fighting. Neither side really wanted the war, and now they agreed to meet in Belgium to discuss peace terms. What they ultimately decided was that nothing would really change from before the war started, called status quo antebellum. The Treaty of Ghent was agreed to on December 24, 1814, proving in the mind of many Americans that they deserved to be an independent nation. Because there was no instant communication, there was one more battle to be fought. Andrew Jackson and some Amir Indian allies from the Choctaw, Cherokee, and Creek tribes defended New Orleans from a British assault. The Battle of New Orleans, fought on January 8, 1815, was probably the greatest victory for the United States of the war, but, ironically, came after the war was officially over. <laughs>